facial nerve. With facial nerve, we have to talk about Bell's palsy. And I really, well, first of all, you have to learn Bell's palsy. Uh, it happens a lot. Uh, it is tested for a lot. And we're going to move on to other problems with making facial expressions. And one has to be able to distinguish Bell's palsy from these other conditions. Okay? So you got to learn this cold. What is Bell's palsy? Bell's palsy is a problem with the entire facial nerve. So we know that the facial nerve has uh, five components. It has four components, but they're going to produce five uh, effects. So what are they going to do? The first, the most notable thing, the person, the thing that is going to drive a person in to see a physician is that, oh my God, doc, I got up this morning, brushing my teeth, and I, I, I can't move my mouth. I, I can't, I look in the mirror, and I can't move my face. I cannot move half my face. Absolutely not. The whole half of the face is not moving. That's going to produce a downturn mouth. It's going to, in, in, a, in a sweet spot of, of ages where you're old enough to have wrinkles and you're young enough not to have incredibly entrenched wrinkles, um, it will take away this wrinkle, which is called the nasolabial fold. Okay? The nasolabial fold in a resting condition. You are always making that wrinkle. All right, so you cannot move half the face on the side of the, of the problem. What else? Well, remember there's a parasympathetic outflow. So the parasympathetic outflow is going to be interrupted and that's going to lead to dry eyes, dry mouth, dry nose, just dryness, dryness. Even, even the sebaceous glands that create earwax, they're off. Okay, so there's just dryness because there's none of this secretion. There's going to be, as I, as I mentioned before, there'll be a para, paresthesia or a dysesthesia from the ear because there's this somatosensory component to the facial nerve. So that may precede the rest of these symptoms, but in any case, it may, it may not, but it is going to be one of the signs of a Bell's palsy. Now, what is this, this word that I've written here? Hyperacusis. Remember that besides the muscles of facial expression, the facial nerve also innervates a middle ear muscle called the stapedius. Now, the stapedius, there is a, um, a stirrup-like uh, uh, bone uh, called the stapes, and this bangs on the drum of the cochlea. There's a couple drums involved in, in hearing. So here, the stapes is banging on the drum of the cochlea, and there is a muscle that can pull this back, and that muscle is called the stapedius. And it is a skeletal muscle that is not under voluntary control. It is... Uh, it is under reflexive control. So what happens is that there's a loud sound, a really loud sound, 100 dB. And it, it um, reflexively activates the stapedius, which pulls the stapes away from the cochlea. That means that uh, anything uh, that is, is uh, any, whenever the stapes is, is banging on the cochlea, now it, it can't, it can't bang as, as hard because now it, it's as though the, 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 the drum, uh, the drumstick is, is pulled back. Now imagine if you lose the stapedius. If you lose the stapedius, now there's no, uh, there's no limit on how much the, the stapes can bang on the cochlea, no matter how loud things are. And so that causes a, a loudness. So sounds will sound too loud on that side, and that's called hyperacusis. It is very disconcerting. People do not like this. These are the things that people may, uh, uh, are probably going to complain about. And there's one more consequence of a Bell's palsy, and that is that the person may lose uh, taste sensation from the front part of the tongue. This is not a symptom. The person is very unlikely to complain about this, but it is a testable sign. You may go in there, you may suspect Bell's palsy, 
and you then go in there and you drop a little sugar or salt right on the tongue in the front, nothing. Put it on the, on the back of the tongue or on the other side of the tongue and they get a nice uh, taste sensation, taste perception. So this is the, this is the complement of Bell's palsy. I'll just show you one example. Um, the aspect ratio on, on this is a little weird. So the, it's elongated. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, in any case, here's a person at rest and here, here she is when she's been asked to smile. And what you can see when she's asked to smile is that this side of her face moves and this side doesn't. Um, so her, her lips don't go up, this eye does not change. And if you can see, there's, there are wrinkles up here on the forehead that are not there on, on the other side. Um, now, at rest, she has, uh, she has a nasal, nasolabial fold. This is a, a, a woman who's been in the sun, and so she's lost some elasticity to her skin, and that, that's permanent without even um, a, a voluntary uh, contribution. Uh, but you can see that this half of the face is not moving. Now, learn all the components of Bell's palsy. We're going to test them this way and that way. If you see uh, facial paralysis, but not these, is that, is that the result of a facial nerve lesion? Well, no. That, that might result from something else, and we're going to look at that. If you see facial paralysis and dry eyes and mouth, what else do you want to look for? You want to look for these other things. If you see them on this side, on, on the right side, are you going to expect these to be on the right or the left side? Everything is on the same side. So these are the types of questions you, you need to be able to master. You need to understand Bell's palsy in and out. Okay, so now we're going to go on to problems with the uh, vestibulocochlear nerve. <music>